Hi there, Lindsay here. It's the 13th day of Inktober and the prompt is Ash and all for the month of October I'm doing drawings of hands and I'm posting them on Instagram and taking part in the Inktober prompts as well. So I thought it'd be fun to open up this month's smart art box and see what we have and it's all inking stuff. Manga is the theme of the box and you got this multi-page brochure that goes through some prompts and some step-by-step uh, -step tutorials for you which is really nice. We've got a pack of hand lettering paper from Hanamule which is a nice thin smooth paper great for markers or for brush lettering we also have a wallet of black pit pens we have sizes from the extra fine all the way up to brush and then a set of brush neutral tone pit pens which are in india ink they're uh, waterproof they work under watercolors and alcohol markers which is nice we also have a mechanical pencil, a plastic eraser, and a set of 24 colored pencils. So it's a really nice robust box and I'm looking forward to using it. I'm going to start off with the mechanical pencils and sketching on the Hanamule brush lettering paper and drawing my hand. Now if you feel like you need some help with your drawing ability, I actually have my course Learn to Draw with Lindsay 50% off through the end of the month. If you use a coupon code Inktober, I will put all the information in the video description including a discount link. So if you need some help learning how to draw. It's a really um, in-depth, robust course to help you with that. Regular price is $79, so it's $39.50 with the coupon code. So if you've been thinking about grabbing that class, that's the cheapest it's ever been, so you can go check that out. So after I had the pencil lines down, I'm going in with the fine liner here, and I use the regular fine, and there's two skinnier options. One or two, one skinnier option, one or two in this uh, pack of markers. And I probably should have gone with a skinnier one, but this makes it real easy for you guys to see, so, so I'm fine with it. And I uh, did a little stippling at the end of the cigarette to show the ash, since ash was the prompt for the month. And I wanted to do just that fun uh, leather cuff bracelet there. I think it looks a little uh, kind of rough and um, kind of gritty. And I wanted like the gritty ash and the gritty bracelet. And I just thought it would be kind of give it some texture and some fun and um, just a little bit of interest. Now I'm going right in with the colored pit pens. And like I mentioned before, pit pens contain a waterproof ink, an alcohol marker proof ink. It's a, a type of India ink, which is great for layering if you like to do mixed media, but you can also scribble it out on a tile or a plate or whatever you have, like I'm doing here, and use it like a watercolor. That way I can get these variety of lighter tones from that limited amount of markers that I have there. So that's a great tip if you're using water-based markers that to get those extra colors, just use a um, just use a plate or something to scribble out your ink and add some water to it. And uh, I think most of us start off with not quite enough supplies and it's a great way to stretch them. Or maybe you're traveling and you don't want to bring everything but the kitchen sink. It's a great way to get a little more bang for your buck, get a little more use in a small space. Uh, and I am just kind of layering on. What I like about this set of markers is that it's got a several neutral to tones, tunes, neutral tunes. <laughs> it's got a brown, like a sanguine orangey color, a gray, a red, a yellow, and kind of like a, um, a corally color. So you get a really nice variety there. So I like to go in and put my darks, then go in and put my midtones, and just kind of build up. I generally layer light to dark, however, I do like to go in and get my contrast. I like to go in and get those darks in first um, because once I've established my darkest darks, I find it a lot easier to layer up to get the um, to get the other tones that I need. I don't want to go too dark though. I just want to get those darks in the in the definite shadow areas. And then I'm taking some water and adding it to my leftover stuff on my palette, adding a little more yellow and getting the flesh tone that I'm going to paint over everything. Because I didn't have any yellows in the shadows because I generally see more pinks and browns and grays in the shadows. So I wanted to save that until I was at the highlight stage, which I'm putting in with just a watercolor brush that I had on hand and lots of water. I was really surprised at how well this paper took the water because it's a really thin, crispy paper. And um, it took it really well. There was a, just a little bit of cockling where I had painted the water, but uh, just mild. You couldn't even really see it that well. So if you have this paper, I know it's been in a smart art box in the past. And give it a try. Even if you don't, you don't have this box, take the paper and try it. It's always a good idea to see 
um, how your supplies work on the papers that you have, even if it doesn't seem like it would be a good fit, uh, give it a try, especially before you go buy something else, because you might have just what you need at home already. And I know it's fun to buy supplies, but you know, if you are doing Inktober and you're at home and you got time to draw, you don't want to have to run to the store to get something just so you can participate. No, just see what, see if what you have will work first. I do think these smart art boxes are fun if you want to try different supplies, but you don't really know what to buy. Um, you know, it gives you a project that you can follow along. If you subscribe to my channel or you follow my channel, you get into the project there. There are other YouTubers that also get the smart art box that might share um, projects and stuff with you. So it's, it's really nice. It's nice for homeschoolers because you may be doing an art curriculum for your homeschool kids, but not necessarily be an artist yourself. That just gives you kind of like a jumping off point and there's always enough to do several projects. So if you have several children, um, it's also a really nice idea there. And I have never come across a smart art box that I can remember that's had anything that would not be appropriate for kids. There's there's been oil paints. I don't, I used oils as a kid. You know, you got to be within reason, obviously. You're not going to give like your toddler a bunch of Sharpies and let them go to town. You know, I mean, yeah, you got to use some, some discretion, obviously, but I think it'd be wonderful if you're a homeschool family and you don't necessarily do art yourself, but you want to give them that arts curriculum. So I'm adding some blush to the fingers just by taking the red marker, water down, and just brushing it here and there where I see that kind of warm glow. And what you really want to do is check out all of those nuances that you see in a reference photo or a subject from real life. And you want to kind of pull and, and almost, um, almost exaggerate some of those colors. And that's what makes it look more realistic and more lifelike, which is kind of funny. But it, it just kind of gives uh, somebody a new way of looking at something and shows somebody how to really observe something, which is what you what you just do normally with your artist's eye. Now I'm using the colored pencils to just um, kind of warm up, enhance some of the colors, smooth some of the colors out, because sometimes it's really hard to get a smooth tra transition with markers, especially on a paper that's not going to take a ton of reworking. Although it didn't pill at all, which I was really impressed with. Um, the thing to to know when you're working on a really, really slick paper like this, it's super smooth, is that it's not going to take a lot of media. It'll take a lot of ink just fine because ink is will layer up and it'll be fine. But if you're going with something like a pencil or a pastel, there's not enough tooth, which is the grit on a paper to grab that media. So whatever I do here with the pencils, it's going to be really subtle, which is good as long as you've got your values assigned and you've got pretty much the you know 80 percent 90 percent of your picture done with the markers this is just enhancement i thought it would be um it'd be nice to get some yellow here i was noticing some light on the hands uh but there's also like if somebody's been a heavy smoker you can get some nicotine staining on the fingers so I thought with that and the color on the the kind of butt of the cigarette, the ashes part of the cigarette. Oh, you know what? I didn't put that like uh, uh, how you know cigarettes can have like a different color at the end. I didn't put that in there because it wasn't a reference photo, and I'm not a smoker, so I wouldn't. I didn't even think about it. Um, but I wanted to get that kind of color a few different places, so I have it on the uh, near the ash of the cigarette and also on the hands to kind of bring a little bit more attention to the ash since that is the prompt ash. Um, could be any ash, could be ash from Evil Dead. I'm sure there'll be some of those out there today on Inktober. And now I'm going in with a white pen colored pencil, adding some highlights, very subtle, adding a little more pink to the tips of the fingers. Cause if you if you do right now, like hold your hand up to the light, you'll probably see a little bit of a pink glow, uh, like on the pads of your fingers, anywhere we've got kind of like a fleshy part of your hand. It's where the light's kind of shining through and you're seeing blood under the surface. Skin is translucent. You see all these cool, interesting colors underneath the veins, the, the blood, the muscles and everything. It, it's just uh, a really neat thing that because you can kind of see the layers and I like that. I'm trying to add some highlights with this white colored pencil on the metal parts on the bracelet. It's not going so well because the paper is so smooth it won't lay down a lot of pigment and also I think these pencils are more of a student grade pencil. They're definitely very, they sharpen really well, hold a fine point, um, but they're a harder pencil than I'm typically used to working with. So it's not letting me lay down too much on the paper. So I think I'd get better results with those pencils on a rougher paper, but it does the trick, gets a job done. I thought I'd go in with a white gel pen and add some more sparkles and high highlights. However, this paper is just so slick that the uh, the pen doesn't even want to roll on it because it's just too slippery. So that didn't really go very well, but that didn't come in the box. So that was just a total extra uh, from my stash I was using. Um, so that's all right. Uh, and that pretty much does it. I, I did add a little more colored pencils in the smoke 
smoke that's floating from the cigarette. And um, yeah, that pretty much does it. If you want to learn how to draw better, check out Learn to Draw with Lindsay, 50% off this month. I'll link it down below. If you want to get a surprise supplies box in your mail every month, check out smartartbox.com and you can see what they offer over there as well. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up before you go, please. Until next time, happy crafting.